Shalom, children. Do you remember what we talked about in the last parasha? We saw how the people now believed Moshe whenever he told them, Yahweh said. They had been afraid because they had heard the voice of Yahweh and had seen the mountain shake. They had heard the thunder and the lightning and the loud shofar. Yahweh wanted certain leaders of Israel to come and meet with him on the mountain, whilst the rest of the people sat around and waited. Yahweh asked for Moshe's brother Aaron, along with Aaron's oldest sons, Nadab and Abihu, as well as Israel's seventy elders. Yahweh wanted them to come near the mountain, but they were still not to get too close. As soon as they arrived, they were to bow. Of course, Moshe was called to go all the way to the top to talk with Yahweh. After he was finished, he came down and spoke to the people. He listed for them all the rules Yahweh expected them to follow, and all the people said yes, they would do whatever Yahweh said. Hmm, I wonder about that. Have your parents ever said to you that if you did something, then you would get a special treat? And of course you wanted to get that special treat, so you said, Yes, Mummy, or Yes, Daddy. But after you got what you wanted, you forgot your promise and did not behave like you should. Well, I wonder how the Israelites will do in keeping their promise. After the people had made their promise, Moshe wrote all the commandments down. Then he got up early the next morning and started gathering stones to build an altar for Yahweh. That reminds me of his great, 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 great grandpa. Do you remember Yaakov? He built an altar to Yahweh as well. Not only did Moshe build an altar, he also placed twelve standing columns there to represent the tribes of Israel. Do you remember when Yaakov's name was changed to Israel? When Yaakov left home, he put up a standing column to remember the place where Yahweh first spoke to him. I bet he never would have thought that hundreds of years later there would be standing columns to represent each of his sons. Amazing. Moshe then sent some young men to get the animals that they were commanded to present as sacrifices for offerings and peace offerings. We will learn all about these offerings another time. For now, we will just see what Moshe did once the animals were slaughtered. He took half the blood and filled a bowl with it, then took the other half and sprinkled it onto the altar. Then he took the Book of the Covenant and read it to the people. Afterwards, the people agreed to do all that Yahweh had told them to do. Now, hold on to your horses, this next part is kind of yucky. After the people said they would do what Yahweh said, Moshe took the animal blood in the bowl and sprinkled all the people with it. Ugh. But back in those days, all covenants were sealed with blood. So the people would have expected that when they said, Yes, we will obey, that they were making a covenant and blood would be involved. After that, Moshe, Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, along with the seventy elders, went up to the mountain do you know what they saw? It was amazing. They saw Elohim, and under his feet were beautiful shiny stones called sapphires. They may have been like the blue gems we have today. Not only did they get to be amazed by that beautiful sight, they also got to sit down and eat. As long as they didn't try to get too close a look or climb the rest of the mountain, they were safe. Moshe left Aaron in charge whilst he went up to meet Yahweh. Moshe began climbing 
and went up the mountain right under the cloud that covered the top. The mountain was a beautiful sight to see. With all the gold and the gems, it was so bright that it looked like someone had made a huge campfire. This time, when Moshe went up to talk with Yahweh, they must have had a lot to talk about because it was 40 days before Moshe was finally able to come back down from the mountain. Well, children, this brings us to the end of our story for today. So we will see you next time for another exciting Torah portion. Shalom.